Now I'm gonna show you how to do a TIG OUT monster coupon with a lay wire technique really fast. All right guys, so I've already got my monster coupons prepped on the outside, the bevel, and the inside. We're gonna go ahead and tack this monster coupon up for the lay wire technique. Now for a lay wire technique, you're gonna need a tighter gap. So I'm gonna use a 332 gap. So get it really nice and tight because we're gonna put the root in with eighth inch wire, but I'm gonna tack it with 332 wire. So I'm gonna get it nice and tight and fit up is everything. So I got my gap that I want. I'm running about 120 amps. I'm gonna tack it with 332 wire. I'm gonna go ahead and put this first tack in. All right, running about 120 amps. You don't want too big of a tack, just a little tiny one to connect it. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and tack this side on the opposite side. Again, we're only gonna use two tacks. And you don't need a big tack, just needs to be a little bit. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna fuse this together, get the tacks on the top and the bottom. So I got my coupon tacked up with an, a 332 gap, that way I can lay wire with 1 8 wire, and I'm gonna go ahead and feather the top tack, that way whenever I tie in, it'll tie in really smooth. So now that I got my top tack feathered, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple dry runs just to make sure everything's gonna go smooth. Cause like I mentioned earlier, something may have changed when you were prepping your pipe or anything can happen. So you always wanna make sure that your wire isn't gonna get stuck and your range of motion is gonna be clean. All right guys, so I've set my machine to about 160 amps to run this lay wire route, and I'm just gonna be pressure feeding my wire. So no wire on the inside of the pipe. I'm just gonna keep it on the outside and just run around it with my TIG rig. A lot of your boiler companies and boiler jobs will want you to do this because it makes the root flush on the inside. So whenever water's going through the tubes, it doesn't get bound up on a heavy root. So they like a flush root or a little bit above flush, about a 16th. So we're gonna try to get flush or a little bit above that. So whenever we finish this route, it should have a line on the outside letting us know that the walls broke down and that it has made penetration to the back side. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now I freehand my roots. You can walk the cup on this. I just choose to freehand. So whatever you're comfortable with, run that. Let's get to it. So I'm gonna do a dry run just to make sure everything's smooth. And let's go ahead and fire up. So I'm firing up at 160, getting nice and liquid. I'm gonna keep my wire in the puddle and just moving back and forth really smooth. And just working my way on the top bevel and the bottom bevel, making sure that everything breaks down. Nice and slow, making sure that we're getting penetration on the backside of this root. And I'll pull my wire out a little bit and dip it just to make sure that we're tying in when I tie in up top. So it's a real fast motion and I'm taking a look and we have a line going through this root on the outside. So I know that it is broke down on the inside. All right guys, so I finished my right hand side and it went in good. Now I'm gonna move over here to my left hand side with my left hand. We talked about earlier, you need to be able to use both hands to be more proficient in the welding industry. If you know how to do more things, um, with your left and right hand, you're going to make more money and you're also going to be able to weld in places that a lot of welders won't weld. So using both hands will make you more versatile and you won't have such a hard time welding. So I'm going to go ahead and lay wire this left hand side. I'm going to do a dry run just to make sure everything's going to turn out really good. Again, 332 gap and 160 amps on this route. So let's go ahead and get it. I'm using 1 8 filler wire eyeballs. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up. We're going to go ahead and add the wire in there and we're going to move nice and slow making sure everything is breaking down. Top and bottom bevel and you just do that back and forth. Again this is very comfortable for me because I am using my left hand instead of my right hand. Keeping my wire in the puddle and now we're tying into this top tack. We're going to go slow Make sure everything is breaking down. We're going to pull off on the bevel. I'm going to take a look and we do have a line in this root. So that means that it is broke down. On some boiler jobs, 
it is a lot more efficient to do the lay wire technique because you're not fighting the bevel walls, it's not breaking down on you. So if you can run a tighter gap with a little bit bigger filler wire, it's really fast as long as you can make sure that you're breaking it down and it's gonna pass x-ray or phase array or a bend test. All right guys, now that I got my lay wire root pass in there with 1 8 wire, I'm gonna go ahead and hot pass with 332. On every TIG weld that I do that's a hot pass, I always use 332 wire just because it melts in there and I know I'm fusing the root to the bevel walls, okay? So I turned it back up to 190 amps and I'm gonna go ahead and hot pass this right hand side. So let's get to it. Again, I'm gonna do a dry run to make sure everything flows good. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up here on the bottom. And with it being a lay wire root, the gap is really tight so we don't have to worry about it sucking out or anything but we're still gonna move pretty quick. Again, we're trying to get this weld test done as quick as possible, so just moving as fast as you can, but also keeping the quality of your weld as high as you can. I always, always put a good hot pass before I do any extracurricular TIG activities, like filling the heavy or putting a lot of wire or metal to it. All right guys, I'm over here on the left hand side, again, using my left hands. And it makes it so nice using your left hand because you don't have to get out of position. You don't have to put a piece of metal or a, or a C-clamp on the end of the pipe to weld it. It's just like your right hand, just opposite. Again, uh, we haven't stuck our tungsten, so it's still really sharp and putting out the right amperage. If you stick your tungsten, the most important thing you can do is just stop grind the area where you stuck it and sharpen your tungsten or change it out. Because if you don't have a sharp piece of tungsten, it's not gonna put the full amperage onto the weld puddle. All right guys, so I'm coming over here on this right hand side and I'm probably gonna run one continuous bead on the top and bottom bevel again, just because we're not that wide to where we have to start running multiple beads. So I grabbed eighth inch wire and I turned it up to about 200 amps just to get that nice flowy movement with the eighth inch wire. And I'm keeping the wire at the top of the puddle because gravity is going to help me pull it down. So just making sure I'm melting everything and it's all tying into the bevels. And once you've been TIG welding a while, it's kind of like drawing on a piece of paper. You can kind of move wherever you want I mean, and fill up as much as you want as well. So the cool thing about TIG welding is you don't have to stop to clean slag. You don't have to stop to do anything. Now, you got to be careful filling up pipe with eighth inch wire because you can get lack of fusion if you're not running warm enough. Even with carbon wire, especially S2 wire. This is S6, so it burns really easily and it's super soft. But if you get some dash two carbon wire, it's a little bit more dense and you got to run hotter. So now I'm going to jump over to this side. I'm going to crank my machine up to probably about uh, 220 just so I can fill this thing out quicker because the whole goal of these weld tests and me showing you how I do them is just so you can do them faster. If you can take weld tests faster and, and you can learn how to make production welds in the field faster, companies will love you. You'll get calls back. And if you make welds fast and clean and pass x-ray, companies will always want you to work for them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a piece of wire. Now that we got that one big continuous bead, I probably don't want to do that again because I'll be fighting gravity and it'll just want to fall out on me. So I'm going to run two beads now. So let's go ahead and, and get this going. So I'm going to fire up here on the bottom. So right at 220 amps, keeping my wire in the puddle. I'm just moving nice and fast. Again, I'm making sure that I'm breaking down um, the surface tension below the wire and I can feel it. And the cool thing with TIG is you can kind of make it your own style. Um, I got buddies, they do different caps than me and they feel different than me and it's really fun. So that's why I always like to do TIG jobs is because you can really just make it your own style. So I'm getting up here to the top and I'm gonna show you guys why I love TIG welding so much. So I'm gonna stop like I'm gonna break arc and then I'm gonna go back down to the bottom and keep going. I don't have to stop because it's tick welding. So if it was stick, I would have to keep stopping and keep cleaning the weld. But with TIG, you can just keep going. So that's how you can weld really fast TIG welding is by not stopping on the weld. And you don't wanna always leave your 1 8 wire in the puddle. You wanna pull it out and make sure that you are breaking 
the bevels down and breaking the metal down and the surface tension below the wire. And by freehanding like this, you don't have to stop and reposition yourself. You can add more wire, you can turn it up, and you can get done a lot faster. All right, so that's the right-hand side. We are close to flush. I'm gonna go ahead and move over here to my left-hand side. Running the bottom right here, keeping that wire in the puddle. Again, we're running at like 220 amps, and it really doesn't matter what this, these fills look like. They can be uglier than crap, but as long as everything's broke down and you don't have no tungsten, no lack of fusion, uh, no porosity, it's okay because it's just a fill pass. You're just filling up the pipe. It don't have to look pretty. It don't have to be perfect. It's just a fill pass. Getting up here to the top. And we're going to keep the arc going and come with this bottom side. And it's really awesome when you can freehand a TIG weld. You're not restricted by anything. You can do your own style, your own speed, cap it however you want, make it any style you want. As long as it's in with the code parameters, you know, above flush, you're not doing anything crazy. As long as it shoots x-ray and you get it done fast, the companies are going to love you for it. All right, guys, I'm going to start with my next pass which is going to be a three bead pass and it's probably going to be my flush pass we'll see whenever we get flush so i'm still at about 220 amps i may need to turn it down we'll find out when we fire up again just moving back and forth making sure we're melting the wire making sure this thing is barely touching that line keeping the wire in the puddle but also pulling it out every once in a while to make sure that we're breaking it down and we're going to get to the top and then we're going to jump back down to the bottom Again, the whole purpose of these videos is to make sure that you understand you can do this as fast as you want with TIG. But also you need to hold the TIG rig really lightly. All right, so this monster coupon is now flush. Again, it's not going to look that pretty, but that's okay because it is just a fill pass. All right, guys, so before I cap it, I'm going to hit my stops up top because there's silica built up and also I'm gonna hit my heavy spot. All right guys, now that we flushed our coupon at 220 amps with eighth inch wire, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this piece of pipe with 332 wire at about 180 amps. Capping with 332 makes it look really nice and you don't have to add a lot of wire and heat because our flush pass is a little bit over flush so we don't have to add a lot of wire to make this cap look really good freehand style. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on my right hand side and keep going until it's capped out. I'm not for sure if this full piece of wire will get us capped out. I may have to grab another one. And it looks like this cap is gonna be a four bead cap, maybe a three, but could be a five as well. So we'll see whenever we get to that point and see how big each individual bead is gonna be. So let's go ahead and start. And you barely wanna grab that little line. One of the most important things about welding is you weld how you weld. Don't weld how everybody else welds. Um, don't listen to someone telling you you're not doing it the right way. Do it your own way. Learn what works out for you and how you like to weld. I had people for years telling me that I need to quit freehanding and walk the cup, but I stuck to my guns and a lot of inspirational guys on social media helped me and just told me what I was doing was right for me. So whatever style of welding you like, stay doing it no matter what nobody says. And if you master it, you'll be really fast at it. And you won't have to worry about um, work or anything once you get really good at your style of welding. Oh, uh, my wire's getting down to nothing. I think I may have to grab another piece of wire. We'll see how far I can get. All right, so that right-hand side is capped out, nice and smooth. That's why I like freehanding because I can do one whole side and not even stop a bit. All right, guys, so we got this right-hand side flushed out with four beads we're going to come over here to my left hand side and cap it out over here and again we got our flush pass a little bit over flush so we don't have to add much wire on this cap with 332 wire moving nice and smooth keeping everything liquid and i've been welding like this the last six years so i've been able to really perfect it and just make it look good now, whatever style you start out using, you're not going to be very good in the beginning, but if you just stick with it and perfect it, um, you know, you'll be really good at whatever style you use and no one will be able to say anything to you contrary. That's why I like these 
rocker TIG torches that you can get from weld tube just because they, they twist on a dime. So if you're trying to freehand or walk the cup in a tight spot, you don't have to have that whole hose that's always wrapping around you and everything. All right, coming up here with my third pass on the cap. Like I said, the cool thing with TIG is you can make little mistakes, but you can fix it really fast by adding wire, moving slower, or moving faster. And one of the most important things to realize with TIG welding is you're not melting, you're not melting the wire with your tungsten, you're just creating a puddle that melts the wire. So once you understand that, TIG welding becomes really simple and easy to manipulate and do what you want to do with it because you know you're just creating a puddle that melts the piece of wire that builds up the weld and connects the two pieces of pipe. So we're coming up with our fourth bead on the cap here and we are at the top. We're going to break arc. All right guys, that is how I do my TIG out monster coupons with a lay wire technique. So hopefully you can understand that welding faster is gonna allow you to test fast and also when you get on jobs welding for companies, it's gonna allow you to stay on jobs longer and also those companies and contractors are gonna wanna keep calling you back because you make welds fast and you make good welds that shoot x-ray and pass quality inspection. All right guys, if you found this video helpful for you or you liked it, please rate, comment, and subscribe to WeldTube's YouTube channel. Also follow the Kentucky Welding Institute and our socials as well.